Welcome to an episode of Blooms for You featuring Dendrobium hibiki. I really appreciate having you here, especially seeing as I'm going to be doing some shout outs, some dedications, plus a few updates on the orchids I'm featuring today. But seeing as not all names are going to be mentioned, <laughs> that's impossible. Dendrobium hibiki serves his purpose apart from being super beautiful to say thank you to everybody who's not mentioned here today for your support on my channel. I have had some seriously challenging days with extreme dry winds. Very, very warm. I don't consider them hot, but you can see that my orchid is a bit dusty and I'm trying to leave the leaves alone because I don't know how the warm wind is going to affect any water on the leaves. I apologize for the dust. You can see a bloom right here. That's not normal. This is dehydration through warm winds and this orchid actually lives on my blooming alley right now because of her beautiful blooms. So the conditions have been extremely challenging and I've been chasing around the patio with my sprayer to keep the orchid somewhat exposed to some form of humidity. I think I'm losing the battle. I don't know how much longer this is going to last, but hey, we'll do the best we can. And still, Hibiki is looking gorgeous. That one bloom, I hope, is a one-off. Plus, I have some natural fertilizer here. Oh, it's all good fun when you are growing orchids outside. What I appreciate are the warm temperatures, finally. And I appreciate that you are here. So why don't we go and have a look-see as to what has been in bloom, possibly still is in bloom, and whose names have come up this time around. And here is my Epidendrum Multiforme crossed with Capricorn Nu in bloom bloom after she had a massive root ball cleanup and a whole chunk of her backside taken off. This spike and all its blooms, which I haven't been able to count because my eyes go cross-eyed. I'm not a good bloom counter when it comes to multiple bloomings like this, but this spike goes to Leon Gurevich, Ruth Kusan, Rute Reis, Snegle Taralt, Rakle Rodriguez, Maria Mincikova, Katerina Duresi, Slada TV, and Joan Bennetson. It makes me happy to put a dent into my subscriber blooms for you list when these cluster bloomers show up because sometimes I feel I'm not getting to you fast enough and I don't want anybody to feel forgotten, but you are not forgotten. I see you and well, thank you so very much for your support. You love orchids, you know that patience with this hobby is key, but here you are. These blooms from my Epidendrum Multiforme cross with Capricorn Nu, they bloom for you and another thing that makes me quite excited is that finally I found the right time of day in combination with no wind so that I could show her properly. It is so difficult to photograph this orchid because the blooms aren't large in individual size. It's the display that is the magic. But now I have some stills also for my portfolio that really showcase how cute these blooms are. The orchid itself, she's not pretty, but the blooms that she throws out, they remind me of a bunch of grapes when they're young on the vine and then they start to form. Of course, you know, we don't get blooms from grapes, but it's a similar kind of spike. It drapes beautifully. If there would be a wedding bouquet for an orchid lover, having this one as the long piece that drapes down the gown, it would be such an accent simply because of its natural display. You may know that I am a fan of green blooms, especially if they are contrasted by white. So these really, really speak to me. And depending on the light, sometimes there's a reflection that goes more into the yellow. But what you see in the viewfinder from the main clip of the orchid, that is her true color. This makes me happy because, as I said, photographing these blooms is tough. The camera doesn't know what to focus on. Getting the color right? <laughs> well, chartreuse green. Cameras like to pick up more of the yellow side of the green. And the blooms last approximately four to five weeks if I can protect her from any dry wind. That is always a detriment and my climate is the wind that very very quickly takes out blooms. You can see she did not struggle at all through that massive division with the roots being chopped off to 30% 
plus having 50% taken off her back. She's growing new roots. The spike didn't fail. The blooms are holding on. It's been two weeks now. I was getting a little bit nervous. I couldn't film this spike as well because of the wind I was having, knowing, as you can see, with a light breeze, how she bobbles and waves and reacts to that. Up the breeze and get it into sort of gale force territory that I've been having. And <laughs> yeah, she was a pleasure just to see in my blooming alley. If I could even see her because of her colors, she really blends in with my white trellis and all the green foliage around her. Gorgeous when she blooms, a little bit of an eyesore when she's not in bloom. Still, for Leona Gorevich, Ruth Kusan, Rute Reis, Snegle Taralt, Rackle Rodriguez, Maria Mincikova, Katarina Dudesi, Slada TV, and Joan Bennetson. For your support on my channel, for being here, thank you so very, very much. By Epidendrum Multiforma crossed with Capricornu, she blooms for you. Before I get carried away with my Dendrobium Sutkinoi, <laughs> these blooms are dedicated to Wasa Ahmad, Bilgehan Sarika, Julin Valledor, Kathy Pedraza, and Amelia Health Tips. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your support on my channel. <laughs> This spike surprises me, makes me happy. Of course, you can hear it in my voice, seeing as it is a rescued dendrobium that I almost lost because it objected to Lekka and self-watering. Well, let me qualify that. It objected to Lekka and self-watering in my ratio of Lekka. I'm sure it would do well if I could tweak the Lekka size and get it to be happy. It is a warm to hot grower, so that has to be taken into consideration. And it is a species antelope type, as you can see. There's a lot of beauty about it, but it looks like it's just gotten out of bed because it's going everywhere. Anyway, I rescued this orchid and put her into small lava rock and self-watering. And here we are a year later with a spike and that makes me feel a little bit giddy inside. I would have hated to lose this orchid. We know that dendrobiums are robust, but that is all relative. They can only take so much, like any other orchid can only take so much abuse. But look at these blooms. <laughs> Where do I start? Where do they start? Where do they end? It's just a curly whirly mishmash of them not even knowing where they can fit with all their curly petals and sepals. I mean, <laughs> the petals are curly, those are the horns, and the sepals are curly as well. They curl around the back, and it has the Elvis twist on the top as well, with a little bit of greased lightning in there. <laughs> this orchid is not fragrant. I did lose three buds when I did that repot because I had broken pots. They were living in pots that were brittle, and I had to change that out. Lava rock is a little bit heavier than Lekka and it was all just a little bit dodgy for me. So while it is still nice and warm, while everything is according to their liking, I switched the pots out and well, this one was in spike and in bud. So I lost three buds and I think <laughs> in a way it's a blessing because I managed to document one bloom properly with all the detail, with all the madness of all the curls and the incredible detail in the lip as well. So if we had had all the buds open, this would look even messier and I couldn't get that one still shot of a bloom by itself without also being all wonky and tangled up like some kind of little squid amongst the neighboring bloom. What a beautiful messy sight though. Absolutely adore these and for a species, if I hadn't messed up the Lekka ratio, she would be looking so much better and be even more vigorous. However, we've set her back. Not enough for her not to be blooming for us though. Well, let me qualify that too. Blooming for Wasa Ahmad, Bilgehan Sarika, Julin Valledor, Kathy Pedraza, and Amelia Health Tips. My cutie, gnarly, crazy, wacky Dendrobium Sutkinoi blooms for you. I so appreciate your support on my channel. Thank you so very, very much. Jan van Herden, 
I really hope that you are into Phalaenopsis because, well, <laughs> you don't really have a choice here. I am dedicating my Phalaenopsis Violacea cerula to you for your support on my channel. And I want to thank you for making yourself known here on my channel and identifying yourself as my brother from another mother. Thank you, Jan van Heerden, so very, very much for your support on my channel, my little Violacea variety cerula. She blooms for you. All right, enough of that gushing. <laughs> Actually, let me continue gushing because my goodness, she's a first time bloomer and I'm gonna keep touching the leaves because it's late afternoon, but it's pretty hot and this orchid has not been accustomed to direct sun at all since she's arrived in my collection. She was a reduced orchid She's a very pricey orchid. I never bought her because I just couldn't warrant the expense. And when I saw a reduction as in a discount, I'm like, yep, that's me. Give me a discount, I'm all over it. So my little Violacea doesn't really look the snazzy part. <laughs> She's still trying to find her bearings, you know. The leaf it came with was a little bit, yeah, you know. Anyway, it doesn't matter here nor there. She is alive. And you know, this is what I was concerned about for the longest. So there's cinnamon in that crack there by the leaf. Because shock horror, I thought, no, please, no, please, no stem rot. Don't want one of those, but she managed to hold on. And isn't she just so cute? So I keep scooting her into the shade, not just because of the leaves, because I can protect those with my hands, but to get the true color of her bloom. Now, I took some images, and I hope either way, they're going to be flashing up across the screen, just because I wanted to get the rich purple of this bloom. She has this royal purple, or indigo as I call it. It is gorgeous. She presents beautifully the proportions and everything. I love them. I am always a fan of a little bit of detail at the edge of the petals and sepals and these species Phalaenopsis, they really do bring that out in tiny, tiny detail but with massive impact and especially we are back to the word chartreuse. <laughs> Seems like with some orchids in my collection that are in bloom right now, chartreuse is the trend. But those little star tipped little edges there right at the end, that little detail, you would think it's unnecessary but it just adds that little touch of je ne sais quoi and whatever it is, it is meant to be and just really presents the blooms beautifully. Now she's only been open three days and she packs a punch when it comes to the fragrance. Ah, if you love cinnamon, yes, this one's for you if you love cinnamon toast. There's a teeny tiny hint of sugar, but it is more intense on the cinnamon side. That is her fragrance. Just boom, one bloom and knock out cinnamon. Absolutely incredible. I do keep her indoors. Well, you know, having lost one very precious summer bloomer already this year, this one I just want to make sure it recovers. And I'm happy the bud didn't blast. Talk about holding your breath. No heavy breathing around this orchid. Make sure that all the doors are closed when handling her because I had one bud forming for the longest time. <laughs> and I'm like, no, please don't blast. But here we are, Jan van Heerden, my brother from another mother, my Phalaenopsis Violacea, my little teeny tiny purple treasure she blooms for you thank you so much for being here oh by the way yes uh, if anybody doesn't know brother from another mother well Jan van Heerden is in South Africa I originally come from Kenya so yeah big continent we're not exactly neighbors but you know when Africans get together on the internet it's like ooh, hello neighbor <laughs> so now we're even relatives who knew and Jan has a YouTube channel called orchids in South Africa which I will link in the description if you are interested in having a look-see at what he's got going on hope you're doing well Jan thank you for everything you're doing on my channel you are so appreciated. Listen between the words for the added detail, okay? <laughs>
This is Lelia Ketiana in her beautiful, full glory, late afternoon sun. I hope that what I'm seeing in the viewfinder comes out on screen as impactful as I'm trying to capture the crystalline effect of these cute little blooms. We are really zoomed in right now, but I have my reasons because having these blooms with this light with the effect of the crystalline on the petals and sepals, I want to take the opportunity to say thank you to Haley Trussler, Nick Moore, and Anita Raj using my first time bloomer, Lelia Ketiana, and dedicating these blooms to you as a sign of my appreciation for your support on my channel. Thank you so very, very much. Now I want to show you what it looks like when I zoom out. I think that we lose quite a bit of the effect. There's a lot of reflection on the petals and sepals. I have some stunning photography though. I don't want to say stunning because I'm such a good photographer, but I did manage to capture some beautiful images almost at dusk because Lelia blooms are so tiny and there's only so much a normal camera can do to pick up on the detail of the lip. How cute all those little frills are and yet when one looks at the bloom from a distance I would forgive you if you said they looked a little plain and they didn't really do that much for you. <laughs> I don't blame you because basically if you're not standing in front of them and if you can't see the diamante effect properly that these sepals and petals have and be able to investigate the lip with a magnifying glass getting deeper and deeper into the details I can really understand why people say these small blooms you can keep them all yours and I'm like going thank you very much <laughs> less competition out there as I'm trying to expand my Rapiculus Lelia collection they of course do not have a fragrance but the longer these blooms have been open which is about four days now the more I am just loving that sparkle I have seen quite a few Rapiculus Lelia blooms now I have a few that have bloomed in my collection some of them have a little bit more sparkle than others but the sparkle isn't always as obvious the way the light is hitting the petals and sepals right now and even I can appreciate it with the naked eye as the blooms move in the breeze those sparkles move around on the petals and sepals as well just remarkable but the orchid herself is doing well in her setup of ceramis and lava rock it is semi-hydro you can see by the size of my hand the proportions and I'm anticipating a little bit of rest for this orchid until she starts to grow out new growths. I don't know if you're into miniature orchids and miniature blooms for that matter. Haley Trussler, Nick Moore and Anita Raj but I'm dedicating these blooms to you regardless of that and I do hope that if you see this video that you know that size does matter to me because these little orchids are very special in my collection and with that they are huge <laughs> thank you once again Haley Trussler Nick Moore and Anita Raj for your support on my channel my first time bloomer Lelia Ketiana she blooms for you One, two, three, four, five. Five blooms to dedicate from my Jumelia Arborescence to Andrea, Maruichu, Chichi Chaish, KDE, and down among the plants eastward. Now I did have your names come up on the list and here is Jumelia Arborescence in bloom. I've had some super windy days so I haven't been able to film as quickly as I wanted to and I'm not dedicating this bloom because that one is clearly going over and the strange thing is this one looks yellower than all the rest on camera but it is still beautiful and white to the naked eye. But I'm going to leave the names as they are. I will however take this one off just to make it a little bit purdy purdy if it will release with its gorgeous little spur there we go five blooms to say thank you to Andrea, Maruichu, Chichi Chais, KTE and down among the plants eastward thank you to you for supporting me on my channel I think I've got quite the cute little candidate here for you <laughs> And even though these blooms aren't long lasting, I can tell you I've got one, two, three, four, and five more buds to come. That is incredible because these spikes are coming out of places where one is already blooming. 
So that is a new discovery for me. Jumelia arborescens will send out spikes out of leaf joints that have already bloomed, which makes it even more exciting, considering that, again, the blooms aren't that long lasting. It gives me the opportunity to get a second flush of blooms and it extends the life cycle of this orchid being in bloom. So this is a first for me to see the stages of maturity the orchid is at and how she behaves. Unfortunately though the blooms aren't fragrant. Can you imagine something beautiful jasmine-y wafting through with all these cute little white blooms? But I suppose the little ghost structures would give themselves away if they were then fragrant on top of everything else just gorgeous i consider this like a little boo casper kind of bloom for obvious reasons <laughs> it looks like the bloom is suspended in the air and is around to spook everybody that long spur is also super super interesting the whole thing about this orchid to be honest with you is just super interesting including <laughs> the container she is in which is a soap dish and only lava rock around her but it does the trick it keeps enough humidity around the orchid and it retains a lot of water because once this orchid gets growing and blooming she needs all the support she can get and it's working out really really well if you're looking for an alternative to an expensive orchid top go to your dollar store go to the bathroom department and then look for bathroom accessories <laughs> because it was the use of orchid tops that inspired me to look for something much more economic and well, enter bathroom accessories and you would have the suckers in here and then you would stick that up against the wall. If this whole container wasn't so heavy, it would also make a great option for hanging this orchid up against the wall, <laughs> but I don't have it that way. She is on a shelf anyway. Love this orchid, so happy to see a new characteristic of her that I had no idea about before. So once again, this orchid, Jomelia Avorescence, blooms for Andrea, Marui Chu, Chichi Chaish, Katie E, and down among the plants, Eastwood. Something unique, something a little bit different, something you probably don't see a lot of on the interwebs, but something for the five of you to express my appreciation with and say, Thank you for your support on my channel. It is so very, very much appreciated. We have not seen Cousin It for a while, but there he is. All his new growths are now extended and he doesn't look like Rod Stewart so much anymore. Back to being Cousin It. His pseudobulbs are now starting to plump up on all of those new growths. Every once in a while, it is nice that Hibiki and Cousin It, my two favorite orchids, when it comes time to make a general dedication to everybody that was not mentioned here today, every once in a while they'll meet up, otherwise there will be jealousy on the patio. Besides, because of the wind, I've taken him away from the deep south where he normally lives. I was afraid he was going to fall over again, and at this point in time, He's safer on the east side. He has done so well up until now to grow out those beautiful new growths that I'm very concerned about anything singeing at this point in time. And when it comes to misting, at least today on this side, I can give him a water bath every once in a while just so that he doesn't start gasping for water and collapse on me. Anyway, I really appreciate having you all here. Thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for spending time with me on my patio, checking out blooms and orchids. Your support is very much appreciated. And believe it or not, from where I am stood, I can see that the orchid top dish of Cousin It is empty again and it'll be now the fourth time today that I am filling up that dish plus I'm going to be misting him again for the fourth time. But what a blessing, my RO system is working. I just have to make sure I can keep up with the demands on the patio. Dendrobium hibiki blooms for you. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition though that you'd please stay safe. Take care, bye.